Hey everybody and welcome to the 39th episode of the Foundation First Fitness Show with Bob Ackowin. Today I want to give you the three top tips and three reasons that I think that you may be struggling to lift a lot more weight and lift heavier weight. So lifting heavier weight has really come about a lot now. It's, it's become super popular, especially with CrossFit. A lot of more attention is going into lifting heavy. And oftentimes people run into these kind of roadblocks where they may be struggling to lift heavier. Now, if you caught my last episode, which is basically going to be linked. I, I always do this wrong. On this side? This side. It's going to be linked up here. I probably got it. No, it's actually, I think it's right up there. Uh, it's going to be linked up there. Basically is... Uh, me discussing overhead pressing and how to lift weight overhead a bit more. Now, I got a couple of questions about uh, other basic areas, so I decided, you know, let me just pull back out of it and just kind of give a basic, basic understanding of what could happen. Uh, and I'm going to link back and I'm going to jump back and forth to it, but it would be really important for you to watch because I do go over a little bit more detail onto those specific areas uh, for specifically for overhead pressing. So if that's something you're really looking for, and it's something you're interested in, head back there to episode 38 and check that out. It's going to be really relevant uh, to you if you are struggling with pressing overhead. So pressing overhead, uh, sorry, uh, lifting very strong is really vital, especially if you're an athlete. Now, not all sports require you to lift extremely heavy weight or be able to lift weight and be stronger, but the grand majority of sports, especially sports that are dealing with a lot more power, you know, generating a lot more power, pushing more, pushing harder, things like that, they require you to be a lot stronger. So uh, you're going to need to understand how to get stronger, and this is what this episode is going to be about. Uh, if you are... Uh, you know, a CrossFitter, it's going to be good for you. If you're a football player, it's going to be good for you. Hockey player, you know, basically any sport that's going to be requiring some sort of explosiveness, comp explosive component to it, strength is going to be part of your normal workout routine. And strength is actually a precursor. So you want to make sure that if you are trying to become a more powerful athlete, that you are getting stronger. It's a precursor to developing power and being explosive. So you need to be stronger. And also it's going to probably decrease your ability or your likelihood of getting injured because a you're getting stronger you're less likely to get hurt because when someone hits you you're not going to be just getting blown up because you're a lot stronger you can stand your ground you're basically going to be fending off a lot of those injuries it's not 100 percent conclusive but i can make some very strong arguments for it so we're going to throw that one right in there now what really happens the struggle that most people have uh, is that they can't seem to take significant strides with their strength. No matter what they do, whether it be, um, you know, they're changing up whatever they're doing, they're, you know, they keep doing it, they be patient, they eat differently, they do a bunch of different things, they never seem to get there. And what actually ends up happening for a lot of individuals, and you might be one of those people if you're listening to this or watching this, uh, is that you may be trying to cut corners. A lot of individuals cut corners. It gets really tempting, especially when you've been trying something for so long and you just can't seem to make up any ground. Your first inclination is let me just cut corners and start trying to figure out another way out of this that, you know, it's going to get me from point A to point B because I can't seem to do anything. So, you know, things like straps, things like wraps, uh, belts, all these things that people think are actually going to make a significant difference. Some do. A lot of them don't. You know, a lot of them are just basically crutches to help put your body in a different position to allow you to lift that weight. So what I usually recommend my athletes do is try to understand how to move better. If your body's going to move better, then it's going to allow you to lift more because you're consequently going to be putting yourself in a better position for your body yourself to be able to lift. Now, you got to remember something. Not every single person is going to be drastically stronger. You know, the more we work and the more we push and the more we go towards something that's against the norm, Mother Nature is going to push back hard, right? If you try to get stronger, at some point you're going to hit that genetic plateau. You're going to get there and you're going to be stuck. But oftentimes we get caught. We think that we're at the plateau. We think that we're right there. And we just kind of throw in the towel and say, all right, this is as strong as it's going to be when we could actually be significantly stronger. We just need to switch a couple of things up. So before I get into those details, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely hit that button below. Leave me a little like button. If you guys are listening on the podcast, head over to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be I'm going to start posting some really interesting stuff. I've already got a Move Better Monday segment on there. So if you're interested in 
that in some kind of some content around that. It's really good. It's going to help you kind of get a more practical look into the stuff that I'm going to be doing. So definitely check that out. Now, for the solutions to how to improve that strength, there's three main areas that I will usually tell everyone to look at. There's three main areas that are usually going to be the culprit. And if you can target these individually and pick out the right one, you can generally fix that kind of issue that you're having and get that weight to rise a little bit quicker. Sorry, rise the weight you're lifting to rise a little bit quicker. Um, so the first thing is stability. Now, if you watched my overhead pressing uh, episode, which was last week's episode, uh, you will notice that I do talk about stability. It's one of the things I do mention. It's one of the first things I mention, which is basically the core stability, shoulder stability. So, for example, let's take, let's, I'm going to get out of the shoulder pressing one because I know some of you have already listened to that. You don't want to hear that one again. I'm going to go somewhere else. So you might be interested in that. So, let's go into something like a squat. You struggle with a squat. Now, if your stability is off, it's going to not allow you to lift a lot of heavy weight. So stability could be from the core straight down to the foot. If your arch is off and your arch is collapsing, you're actually losing strength because instead of being structured and sound and having a good grasp of the ground, your foot, the bones in your feet are actually collapsing and shifting everywhere to try to find a mechanically strong and stable position for you to press from. You don't want that. You want to be nice and sound on the ground. Likewise, you want to be nice and sound in the core too. If your core is weak, you may not be able to support the weight that's on top of you and your body's going to start adjusting underneath itself to stabilize that weight that's sitting on top of you. It's sitting on your shoulders. And, you know, obviously you could say like, yes, I, but I, you know, I squat with a, I squat with a belt. So I do a belt squat basically is where you have the weight it's coming. It's a harness that sits from your hips, pulls you down. Yes, that's another alternative. But again, if your foot's collapsing, same thing applies there. So that's the first thing I would tell you to do. Make sure that you're covering your grounds on stability. Maybe throw in some stability, some accessory work. We call it accessory work, was essentially, which is essentially just taking, going away from our main movement a bit and saying, like, let's say we're doing a squat. We're going to head away from it a bit, but it's still complementary to that main lift. So something like a lunge, a step up, you know, uh, a split squat. You're doing a hamstring curl, something that might be kind of directly linked to that that's going to help it out. In this case, maybe you could do some foot posture work. There's tons of stuff out there on that. You can do some core stability work, which is stuff that I'm always throwing out there. So if you hit up my Instagram page, you will definitely see tons of that there. I'm always throwing out some uh, some core stuff. So whether it be upper body or lower body, there's going to be tons of stuff out there for you to try. The second thing you're going to want to pay attention to and the second important thing that's going to affect your ability to push uh, a lot more weight, a lot heavier weight is going to be your mobility. Now, mobility is basically your limitation in movement. It's actually the ability to move, but lim it's going to be limiting your movement. So why mobility would affect you is you are unable to move in that range. So what we want to do is for the second thing, we want to increase mobility. If you can increase the mobility at a specific joint that might be slowing you down, you might be able to lift more weight. Sometimes it's the ankle. I know that I really, I really harp on that a little bit. Um, just because I don't think the ankle is always the issue. For some individuals, it is. Some individuals have limited ankle mobility. Not always. Uh, you could have a lack of mobility at the hip because your hip is trying to stabilize your spine. So you're not able to get that mobility from your hip because it's trying to stabilize your back. It's trying to stabilize your pelvis. It's trying to, it's trying to do more than what it should be doing. So instead of being solely focused on being mobile and allowing that movement to occur, it's kind of like picking up the slack from all these different areas. So it's stopping you from really ramping up that weight. Uh, and this can be very true for pro athletes. I have tons of pro athletes that are struggling with mobility issues that once we've addressed them, once we fix them, their numbers start flying through the roof because they're like, wow, I never knew I could do this. Well, it's because you were limiting your body's ability to expose itself to that weight because it wasn't able to move properly. So you were limiting what it could withstand. It was saying, okay, I'll be, you know, my hips will be stable for just a bit more, 
but that's it. I can't do much more because I'm going to get hurt. So it kind of stops you. So you basically just sit around at one weight and never really get any stronger. So maybe try taking a look at mobility. When I did press overhead, I was talking about the mobility of the thoracic spine. So that upper back area, if you're able to create that mobility, you might be able to get your body into an optimal position to support that weight straight overhead, right? That kind of makes sense. So the variety is the third thing. So for the third thing I would tell you, add some variety into your workout. It doesn't have to be something crazy. You know, it could be going from low reps to low reps, heavy weights to explosive and power exercise. It could be changing up from, from high volume, from like a lot of weight reps and sets, basically taking a lot of weight and doing a lot of reps and sets with it. So six by twos, uh, five by threes, things like that. And maybe just dropping it to like a four by one with that same weight you were doing or just a bit heavier and just kind of like lift a bit and then just done, you know, lower down the volume of your workouts and see what happens. Everybody's body may react differently. So you might want to try something because at this point you're not really getting anywhere. So you might as well just take a shot at that. A lot of individuals struggle with that tip the most because for them, it's, I have to do more to get better instead of, oh, maybe I should be doing more of the right, maybe I should be doing less things, but do just the right amount that's going to allow me to improve and maybe just kind of pulling back a bit on that volume and that will significantly change your results. It could, it's done, I've seen it before, I've seen it done tons of times. There's actually someone, I think in California, if I'm not mistaken, he really preaches like, uh, you know, deadlifting a really heavy amount of weight, but like resting for five minutes and then doing it again, resting for five minutes, doing like three to four sets, and that's it. So it's very possible. It's done all the time. There's a lot of research on it. There's a lot of anecdotal research on it. I think it's anecdotal. Yeah, that would be the word. Um, the other thing you can do is do speed band work. So speed band work is basically just overloading uh, a certain angle of that or a certain position of that re uh, that lift. So swapping the force curve on it. So instead of it being really heavy at the bottom when you're trying to do a bench press and then, you know, pretty comfortable to be done at the top, you're reversing that. So you're making it pretty easy at the bottom, a little bit harder at the top. It's going to change the force curve, change the force angles and the levers. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to alter your body's understanding of that movement and allow you to kind of continue that press through. And maybe you can even just take a break. I know it's something that a lot of individuals, as I mentioned before, bring down the volume. This is an extreme bring down the volume. This is literally just cutting it off at the source and literally just dropping the volume. Maybe that's what your body needs. Maybe take, you know, a week off heavy lifting and see what happens. See if your body responds better to that. Maybe you were, maybe you were dealing with something that you didn't really know. Maybe you had like a little bit of a lingering issue, a lingering injury that had kind of carried on for a little bit longer than it than you wanted it to. And now it's kind of overtaken your body's ability to lift heavy weight. And now you're being hindered by that. So those are the three things that I would tell you to work on. Stability, mobility, and variety in your workouts. Now, yes, there are a bunch of different things. There are so many other things to be going on. It could be the, you know, the and I say variety. It could literally just be your workout itself. It could be the sets and the reps that you're doing are not even anywhere close to what they should be. Uh, it could be a strategic approach. It could be something that you're eating could be fatigue. So there's so many things that could be going on. These are just the three that I most commonly deal with and the most commonly see are basically structure and variety. Anything around that, yes, is possible. Not as common. I do see it, again, not as common. I really try to target these three. So if there are any questions you have or if you think that maybe there might be another reason for that and you want to throw that into the comments, hit me up. Let me know what you guys think and I will definitely answer that for you. For those of you listening on the podcast, have yourselves a great day for YouTube as well. And I will see you guys next time and always, always build that foundation. Take care, guys.